Hi all, so in this video I'm going to do a more deep dive into the neural network of coalescence, training it, and also I'll touch on the um, sample analysis too. So um, yeah, this is just to clear uh, any questions and, and give nuances. Um, so yeah, um, as you know, you can you can drop the samples um, either on the network here or over here in this sample tab, doesn't matter. And I'll drop one and it analyzes it. And it analyzes it and then cuts it up and put it puts it here in the network. And you can see these little circles are the, are the slices. Um, okay, so let's talk about that a bit. Well, first, let me touch on the sample analysis. Um, if, if you want um, it to load instantly or analyze the sample instantly in the future, you should press this button, this is on, and then drag in your samples. And what it will do is save um, these analysis files, kind of like Ableton ASD files. They're I call them DBD files, and they're saved right next to the original file. Now, by default, you should probably have this off so you don't create a bunch of files. But if you're making a preset or you're dropping in long samples, you need it to load fast. Um, turn that button on and drop them in, and it will save the analysis so in the future it will be basically instant. Okay, so now let's just talk about the network. Um, and how the samples go into it. So right now, or let me let me talk about the network. Um, so this is an SOM neural network. Um, let me train it a bit more, and I'll, I'll get into all this. Um, and and it's what it does here is that it groups or clusters uh, data points. And what those data points are, are the different slices of the sample. And um, uh, they're visualized in this circle. And um, how, and by the way, if you hold Alt or Option while you hover above this, you'll light up the network as you can see now, so you can see the coloring a bit. So let's talk about a bit about what these colors are and what exactly it's grouping. Um, to do that, I'll go into this Network Settings tab. And here in Setup, you see it says Features Chroma. And so this is saying what is, what is the spectral features or the descriptions of each sound slices um, that is being grouped. Um, so in other words, when it's creating these clusters, when it's grouping them, what is it grouping them based on? And that's what this features um, tells it. So there's a few different um, descriptions, descriptors or uh, modes that you can group the samples based on. By default, I have it in chroma, which is like chromatic. Um, so chroma is um, is is like a in this device is a 24 step octave and when you have it in chroma mode it'll group the samples based on their features in that 20 in 24 step octave which means that this groups them more based on tonality and harmonic content so if two notes are similar like two of these slices are like the same fundamental then they'll be grouped closer together in this chroma mode regardless of octave or anything like that. So maybe uh, there's not too many slices here to really tell, but maybe you can tell right here with these three. They're all kind of the same note. Um, and these two down here are the same note. Yeah, there's not a lot of slices in this example, but um, hopefully that will sh that shows you that it groups them kind of based on their fundamental or their harmonic content in general, um, based on a 24-step octave. So that's what chroma mode does, and so it's good for if you want to group them based on notes or tonality, 
things like that um, where the actual fundamentals sound similar. Um, here in Mel mode, and this would probably work a bit better with drums. So let me drop in, let me clear the network. So you can clear the network and all the samples with this button. See, the samples are gone now too. All right, so now let me drop in this like just drum loop and it cut up the drum loop. And we're in Mel mode. Let me train it a little bit more. And now you see the colors look a bit different. So what Mel and what Bark mode essentially do are they they are the descriptions of the sound based on the frequ it's based on the frequencies from low to high. And um, I say that because chroma like I said, is based on just like a fundamental. But Mel and Bark are better for if you want it to be sorted things or group things that are closer in frequency, you know, and drums are good for that. Like you see all these lower drum sounds are there. And these higher drum sounds are here, these higher pitched ones. And these lower ones are more yellow and the higher are more blue. So yeah, I mean, Mel and Bark are two different scalings of frequency. And um, they're just informed by psychoacoustic studies on what people perceived was like an equal step between um, frequencies. But um, they're, very, very, they're similar to each other, but they scale differently. But yeah, for your purposes in this device, those are good if you want to group um, things by pitch like drums. Um, if I go to bark, and I'll train it a bit more again. Um, a similar thing happens, but it will happen a little differently because their, their scaling is quite different. So you can play around and see which you prefer. So like I said, drums are good, or, or any sound if you just want it s or clustered based on if it's lower or higher frequency. Um, the last one is speech, um, which I could clear and drop in this little vowels sample, which is just me saying different vowels and different octaves. And so speech uses what's called the mel sepstral coefficients. And so it, those are used for speech recognition. So it should group them based on like vowels and things like that. Like let's see. <laughs> see, those are similar. <laughs> So yeah, see, it's doing a decent job grouping um, the vowels despite them being in different octaves and all and being different pitches. So speech is good for grouping s sounds based on speech or if you just want to experiment and see what happens. Um, great, so those are the feature modes. And like I said, the coloring changes for all these. And um, let me start explaining it for Mel and Bark and stuff. So. Mel and Bark is easy with them. Um, if you remember the drums, which I can drop in again, were colored, the low ones were more yellow and the high ones are more blue. And so that's because um, how it colors these, is it just, for each of these feature things, it's a list of values. So Mel would be a list of the intensities from low to high. And what I do to get the color is just split each of those lists in half for a point and just see, is it more low, more, um, is the sum higher on the low end or the high end? So if the lower half of the values are higher, it gets more yellow. And if the higher half of the values are higher, it gets more blue. And if it's kind of in the middle, it gets more green. And so for melon bark, that just means that if it's more yellow, it has more lower frequency. And if it's more blue, it has more higher frequency. For chroma, that, means instead it deals with the octave divisions, um, which is a little less intuitive to just know. But so the more yellow should mean that it has more intensity in the first half of the notes of the octave. And the more blue, it has more intensity in the second half of the notes in the octave. And for the speech, it just deals with those sepstral coefficients. And those are just split in half. So it's like yellow is the lower half has more intensity and blue as the higher half, just like the others. But the meaning is a bit different than, say, what it means for Mel Bark. Um, okay. Um, 
so that's how it chooses <laughs> what um, description to or what um, feature to make the clusters from from here. Um, so and then that's how the coloring looks. Um, so let's talk um, about some other stuff. One is radius. So radius deals with how big the cluster sizes will be. So if I turned uh, radius way up right now and trained it, it's going to just push everything way out towards the edges because the <laughs> radius of each group is really high. But if I made the radius really small, um, it will pull them close to each other. Now, right now, they're pushed out really far, so they might not really make it back. So let's restart. And they're all going to be grouped really close now. This is a small radius size, 10%. So when you have a smaller radius size, you do have to train it a lot more to get it to spread out because they're all grouped close together. So one thing you could do is start with a little bit higher of a radius and train it a bit just to get them to spread out a little bit, but not too much because at some point they won't come back together. So, you know, at, you might have to change it. If you want to make a smaller cluster, you know, now I can train it more. And you'll want smaller clusters if you want a lot more different kinds of groups, you know. Like if you only had a hand, like 10 or so groups of things you want. You can have a bigger radius, but if you want like many small groups, you know, let's say if you had many notes and you want them all to get their own group, then you're gonna have to have a smaller radius so that they form into smaller clusters. This is something um, you'll probably, if you really wanna know how to do well, training an SOM neural network, you'll have to research into that because that's a whole field of study. But just for the purpose of making a fun audio device, that's still pretty useful. Um, you can get away with just playing around with these settings. Um, so yeah, um, strength deals with how strong it learns each training. So if the strength's really low and I trained it, not much will really change. You know, that didn't really do a lot. If the strength was really high, like ridiculously high, um, yeah, a lot more just happened. Um, so, you know, you might want a st higher strength if you wanted to train faster. And if you had like many sample points and the training was really slow, like right now it's fast, it's fine, but it can get really slow. Um, you might want to have a higher strength and a low repetition just so you don't have to wait. But the problem with doing that a lot is that the more strength you train, the more biased the network gets towards every point of data. So if you had the strength really high, the network would get really biased really fast on the first samples you drop. And maybe you don't care about that. But if you're going to drop tons of samples in here and you want it to like organize them less biasly, you want a lower training strength so that it slowly learns and it's learning from all the data instead of being biased on one data. Again, this is something you have to play around with. Repetitions is just the number of times it repeats a training whenever you trigger one. So right now it's on five. It's just going to do it five times. That was, whoops, I accidentally restarted. Okay, and if I turned it up to 22, now it's doing 22 of those. Um, yeah. Um, if you're going to train a lot of things and it's slow, make sure you start your repetitions low first. Okay. Um, let me jump over here to transients. So transients only, this is a big one. Right now, if we go into samples, you can see these are just cut up with these blue lines by their transients. And each of those points, those lines, are these <laughs> circles. So it's only sending in these transients into the network. Uh, let me delete this. So each of these blue lines are the transients, and each of these points are the transients in the network. Now, let's say you wanted actually to have all this, all this info, not just the transients, but all of, all of these sounds sent into the network. Well, then you'll turn transients off. But when you do that, you'll see it's going a lot slower. We're only on iteration two right now. And that's because it's sending every spectral frame in there 
instead of just the transients, which is a lot more points, like thousands or it just depends on your sample. So for really long samples, this is basically impossible to do. You'll be waiting here forever. And the other problem with doing that is that there's actually only 2,500 spaces on this map for samples to be in. So if you did that with a really long sample or with many samples, you'll just run out of these spaces before you can even do the whole sample. So, uh, but you can see now this has way more points. And so that can be desirable and it's totally fine to do with less samples or smaller samples. And you can, like I said, just lower the repetitions and turn up the strength if you don't want to wait. Um, but yeah, now that you have many more points and sounds, you can do more blending kind of effects. You know, you can just do a lot of different stuff, um, but they won't all be at transients. Um, and likewise, you can no longer edit the transients here because transient mode's off. So that's transient mode. Um, let me turn it back on. Okay, so here, these buttons that I've been using the whole time, Hopefully obvious. Restart clears the network and starts training from scratch. Um, more just keeps training it more for when it left off. Stop is an emergency stop. Sometimes it has issues. So if you stop it, it might not show the complete network. You might want to do a single more repu repetition. Um, append mode. I recommend just ha always having append mode on. Um, when append mode is on, like if I dropped a new sample, um, like I will now, um, then what happens is it just adds that sample to the network and doesn't retrain the other samples. And similarly, if I were to change like the range in one sample, it will only affect that, um, the values for that sample and won't affect the other ones. So if I affect this one, if I do this one separate, it only changes those. If append mode was off and I made any of these changes or dropped in a new sample, it will not only do it for the new for the affected sample, but it will do it for all of the samples. And that's why I say you should have append mode just on because it's just going to like save a lot of time training and processing unless you want it always to work with all the samples for every training thing, then you want to append off. But um, to me, you can just press more. And when you press more, it affects all the samples. So you don't even need to turn it off to me. Um, yeah, so that clears up all these settings. And like I said, this clears the network. Um, there's this little preview thing here that's on by default. So if, you, if I were to drag my mouse on here or click it, we'll be able to preview and hear the different um, samples. And this is not playback I'm doing right now. This is the preview. So this is just so you can do a quick, dirty preview of what what these different slices are. And you can control the gain, the loop size. Um, nearest says, if it's it's on by default, that it will, it will play the nearest one to where you clicked. But if I turn that off, it will only play the one that's underneath where you clicked. So right now, it doesn't play anything until until I get right on top of these. Great, so that's how preview works. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure um, that is a, a good deep dive into the network. Um, I'm gonna have other deep dive videos which will cover other topics surrounding the network, so check them out.